13 WMAZ Morning starts now. It is a glowing start to the day and today we are continuing to turn up the heat. I'll have those details and talk about when measurable rainfall will return. That's all coming up. Plus, the man accused of killing an Osceola teacher and beauty queen takes the stand. How Ryan Duke defended himself in his murder trial. And gun violence in one Macon neighborhood has residents speaking out what they want to see happen at Lake Wildwood. And the Air Force is struggling to find qualified candidates. How they're fighting to keep the skies covered and you protected. Well, good Wednesday morning, Central Georgia. You're taking a live look over a beautiful downtown Macon. The time is now 631 a.m. On this May the 18th, you give yourself a pat on the back. We've made it halfway through the work week. I'm Wanya Reese. And I'm Caitlin Heck. That sunrise, we went from all the pinks and purples to now all the pinks and yellows. I love it. Great way to start a Wednesday. You can see it, and it just feels like, Courtney, we're warming up already. I could feel it <laughs> through the screen. That's right. This does look warm, doesn't it? It really is beautiful, though. Happy Wednesday, everyone. What a way to kick off the day. Hopefully, this can just make your morning nice and bright, just as the sky looks for the start of the day. 57 right now in the city of Macon. It's a comfortable morning out there. Temperatures are nice and cool. Dew points are still tolerable. They're not necessarily in that humid range just yet. Unfortunately, that will quickly change this afternoon. So enjoy this morning. 57 in Warner Robins. We're at 57 in Roberta, 56 in Perry, 60 down in Montezuma, 56 in Irwinton and 55 in Dublin, 57 down in Hawkinsville and 61 in Milledgeville, 60 in Unadilla. So upper 50s, low 60s for the most part to send you out the door. We are several degrees cooler than this time yesterday, especially in Dublin, noticeably cooler, upwards of 11 degrees cooler. And despite our colder morning. We are going to be warmer this afternoon. Temperatures will quickly climb. We'll be in the mid 80s as we head towards your lunch hour and then low 90s this afternoon. We'll continue to turn up the heat this week, but then we finally turn up the rain chances. I'll have those details in just a few minutes. Thank you, Courtney. We now know the names of the family members involved in a drowning and rescue at Emerson River Park. The Bibb County Sheriff's Office says the call came in around 630 last night about a possible drowning. Rescue crews pulled 28 year old Alex Mendoza 23 year old Lori Yassiri and 17 year old Betty Giselle out of the water. The teen was unconscious. She, her family members and one of the rescuers went to the hospital. The 17 year old died there. The sheriff's office says the other victims, along with the bystander who tried to help them out, are stable. The accident is still under investigation. As testimony continues in the murder trial of Tara Grinstead, a surprise witness took the stand yesterday. Now Ryan Duke testified in his own defense yesterday. He denied killing the Osceola teacher and beauty queen and claimed it was really Bo Dukes who murdered her. Ryan Duke claimed on the night Grinstead went missing in 2005, he and Bo Dukes drank beer and did tequila shots. He says Bo Dukes woke him up around 8 the next morning, saying that he had killed Grinstead. Ryan later testified Bo took him to the pecan orchard to show him Grinstead's body. You want the jury to believe that you lied and confessed to a murder you didn't commit because you were scared of Bo Dukes, right? I lied and confessed because I did not think Bo would ever tell the truth about what happened. You could have just told him the truth and they would have still had some semblance of peace, right? I don't know that. It's easy to look at something from after the fact. The defense argues that Ryan Duke falsely confessed in 2017 while under the influence of drugs, but prosecutors yesterday pointed out that his account on what drugs he was taking keeps changing. Also yesterday, Bo Dukes was called in to testify, but he pleaded the fifth to avoid incriminating himself. Court continues today. There's no word on when the defense will rest their case. Well, today in Atlanta, Georgia's highest court is scheduled to hear arguments in a former Houston County bus driver's vehicular homicide case. Four years ago, a jury convicted Shalita Harris of causing an accident that killed six-year-old Arlana Haynes. Harris claims her trial in 2018 was unfair, arguing jurors did their own online research about her possible sentence. That year, a judge sentenced Harris to three years in prison. She also got seven years probation. Now she wants a new trial and is appealing her conviction to the state Supreme Court. The time is now 6.35 a.m. on your Wednesday morning. A North Georgia woman is now in the Bibb County Jail after a wrong way crash on I-16 in Macon. It's an update to a story that we brought you earlier this week. The Sheriff's Office has charges for 41-year-old Jenna Scheidegger of Dawsonville include serious injury by motor vehicle and driving under the influence. Deputies say Scheidegger drove a Chevy Silverado when she got on the interstate from the Spring Street exit ramp. They say she drove west in an eastbound lane and hit a 41-year-old man. Jones went to the hospital in critical condition. 
One Macon neighborhood is now putting the focus on safety after someone shot at a home Monday night. Biv investigators say one house on Friar Truck Lane in Lake Wildwood has been shot at twice this year. Michael Mitchell lives directly next door to that home and he's concerned. My kids were running through the house. They was they were scared and and I was like, Lord have mercy. Y'all just duck. Just stay here. Stay in the house. Stay in the room. Don't 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 go out there. Some scary moments. Angie Horn built her home in Lake Wildwood over 30 years ago and raised her three kids there. She says she would like to see more law enforcement presence in her neighborhood. I've never lived anywhere in my whole life that twice I've been this close to gunfire. Ever. So and we lived in Atlanta. Chief Deputy Michael Scarberry says they can't make the report of the latest shooting public right now because they are waiting on more information. Well, over $85 million. That's what Macon Bibb County Mayor Lester Miller proposes spending for public safety. That was the issue top of mind last night as he introduced his more than $198 million budget for the next year. Mayor Miller highlighted raises for deputies, more shifts for firefighters, jail improvements, and a fire training center. Bibb Chief Deputy Michael Scarberry says the new salary for a deputy starting out puts the county on par with other Central Georgia law enforcement. The mayor says the pay bump could help the sheriff's office recruit more deputies to chip away at the shortage. Mayor Miller also proposed $500,000 for pedestrian safety measures like lights and sidewalks. The commission is set to vote on the budget June 21st. You can read more about the spending plan right now on 13WMAZ.com. In election news this morning, we are now less than a week out from the May primary, which means candidates are starting to make their final campaign stops and pushes to voters ahead of next Tuesday. That's right. One of the races on the ballot this year is for a U.S. Senate seat in Georgia. It's the one Raphael Warnock currently holds. He has one challenger in the Democratic primary, but the Republican primary next week has six candidates looking to advance to November. That includes former Georgia Bulldogs running back Herschel Walker. Now his team says he'll hold a rally in Macon today. It's at 2 o'clock this afternoon at the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame. Another big race in the Peach State is the one to become Georgia's next governor. Our current governor, Brian Kemp, looks to hold on to his seat. He faces four other candidates in the Republican primary, including former U.S. Senator David Perdue. Purdue plans to campaign in Macon on Friday. He'll be at the Middle Georgia Regional Airport at 1045 in the morning. On the Democratic side, Stacey Abrams is running to become Georgia's next governor. As she has no challengers in the primary next week. Now we want to make sure that you have all the information you need before heading to the polls May 24th. You can find key dates and races right now in our May 2022 election guide. It's on our homepage at 13WMAZ.com. Remember, you can also text vote to 478-752-1309. And we'll actually send that guide directly to your phone. In other news this morning, today the Dublin VA will host an event with the goal of supporting health and well-being while also helping out homeless vets. It's the annual VA 2K Walk and Roll. It starts at 10 a.m. at the Carl Vinson VA Medical Center. There will also be an evening walk around the campus from 6 to 9 this evening. The event is free, but you're encouraged to bring voluntary donations to help out homeless vets. That includes clothing, toiletries, packaged food, or bottled water. Also today, Peach County will unveil a new mural. The Board of Commissioners and students of this year's Peach County High Fine Arts class will have a ceremony in Fort Valley. It's happening at the board's public meeting room on Person Street at 3 o'clock this afternoon. The time is now 639. Ooh. These sunrises have been just about as pretty as any picture I mean, of mural. Yeah, they've been absolutely beautiful. I mean, I feel like at least two or three days this week we've been having some very beautiful mm -hmm. sunrises, but you know, it's a nice gentle warning of the heat that's coming. <laughs> that's <Yes>. right. <laughs> they try to ease us into the day. That's right. That glow that just looks hot, that <laughs> just sets the precedent for the day. But really does cause for some beautiful and colorful mornings. I mean, this shot on top of the fairgrounds turned to look at all the setup for May Days on the Midway with that nice and kind of purplish hue that's in the sky thanks to the sunrise. I mean, this is just a beautiful start to the morning. I love this sky cam view. It's always fun when they have the fair set up or in this case, as we're calling it, the mini fair. May Days on the Midway, that kicks off tomorrow, everyone. And Oh, is it going to be hot if you're heading out to that event? I'll have those details in just a couple of minutes for you. You're looking live on top of the fairgrounds. I see a couple of people working, getting ready for the big day tomorrow. I always love to see people on here. They have no idea we're watching them. Everybody 56 right now in the city of Perry. Is that a little creepy? Yeah, probably, but it's okay. 57 in Macon, 56 in Fort Valley, 57 in Roberta. 60 in Montezuma and 59 in Gray. We're at 61 up in Milledgeville, 56 in Cochrane and 57 in Hawkinsville. Area wide, no matter 
where you're getting ready to step out the door for work and school halfway through the work week. By the way, everyone, it is Wednesday. It's pretty comfortable out there. We're in the mid to upper 50s along with some low 60s out there. Through the day today, we'll continue to experience a lot of sunshine. Now this morning when you walk out, it's a pretty comfortable start. Dew points are nice and low, but unfortunately that is going to change today. Wind is going to start to pull out of the southwest. What does that mean? We'll be under the influence of the Gulf of Mexico, so a warmer air mass, also a more humid air mass will enter the forecast. Low 90s today. Some of us might head into the mid 90s, so we'll get close to record heat today. Through the overnight, lows will drop into the mid to upper 60s, so a warmer start to tomorrow. It'll also be slightly more muggy. We'll have a few extra clouds around tomorrow. Highs in the mid to upper 90s. We could maybe have a stray shower tomorrow, just thanks to the fact that we'll have more moisture in the atmosphere. So as we start to heat up, we could maybe have a pop up shower or thunderstorm, and we'll do the same thing into Friday. So if you are heading to May Days on the Midway tomorrow, here's a look at the forecast for it. Maybe a stray shower when the event kicks off at 5, 97 degrees. So please stay hydrated. I said it a little er earlier this week. One of those nice, cold, large lemonades at the fair probably will hit the spot tomorrow. And then as we head into the late evening, temperatures still near 90 by 8. Everything wraps up around 11. It'll still be very warm and muggy. Now, maybe a stray shower Friday afternoon as well. Saturday's rain chance has gone down, so that's good news for any of you with those Saturday afternoon plans, but keep your eyes to the skies. We'll increase our coverage of rain for the end of the weekend and start of next week. And as we head into Wednesday of next week, we're going to continue to stay unsettled, it seems, so we could pick up an inch plus of rain. That would be wonderful. We could definitely use it. So some beneficial rainfall on the way, which will also give us a break from the upper 90s. So mid to upper 90s to round out the week with maybe a stray shower. Then we increase our coverage of rain through the weekend. We'll be back in the 80s by Sunday and low 80s for Monday and Tuesday. This week's top teacher wants her kids to show emotion in their love of reading. Find out who, coming up next.